a model steam engine test plant part 12. The dual water tank is finished and it is time for the final assembly of the parts, followed by making a check valve adapter to connect the hand pump to the boiler. Even though the water tank assembly is quite simple, I thought it would be a good idea to show how I bolted the top tank to the pedestal. The very stylish pedestal, may I add, which is far better than the plain stainless steel bar in its original form. This is the lower water tank, one or two marks around the rim and I don't really know what they are but I'll look into it later. The lower tank is held to the pedestal using a countersunk bolt as I showed in the previous episode. Before I get a barrage of questions saying why did I use such a long plain shank bolt, I did mention this in the last episode too. The reason for this is twofold, the first one being that I didn't have a short stainless steel Allen cap head bolt, and the plain shank part of the bolt is much better for the o-ring seal. To assemble, I held the pedestal tightly in the chuck and used an Allen key to tighten the bolt, and I tightened the Allen key quite firmly using my Barco spanner. The countersunk Allen bolt in the base is not stainless steel, but it's not going to go rusty as the o-ring will prevent any water from getting to it. That's the plan anyway, if it does start to rust I will splash out and buy a stainless steel countersunk bolt. Annoyingly, I do have some stainless steel countersunk bolts, but they're the wrong thread. I wanted the threads at both ends of the pedestal to be the same. Unlike the way I showed the test assembly in the last episode, this time I'm assembling the tanks where they're supposed to be, with the two boiler bushes facing the front. The bottom one is for the water drain, the top one is for the injector valve. The whole thing is looking just the way I thought it would do. There's plenty of room around the side of the main copper water tank to allow the injector overflow easy access to the tank. This is the lower tank water drain and for the time being I'm just fitting a blanking plug. It's fitted with an o-ring for very easy and quick removal. It will also give a perfect seal against the water Bear in mind this tank is not a pressure vessel, water is at atmospheric pressure so it shouldn't leak out. I need to fit an extra check valve between the hand pump and the boiler and here it is on the bench. It's a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch check valve. The original check valve on the boiler was far too small, at least for a hand pump. It will be okay for a number 2 injector which uses 5 32nd pipe but not so good for fast delivery of water from the hand pump. First of all, I removed the original union nut from the adapter that I made. It was only fitted to protect the threads. Over now as usual to my Boxford lathe with a piece of brass in the chuck, and I'm going to make an extension sleeve to fit the check valve to the adapter that I made. I was originally just going to pipe the pump into the end of the adapter, but the bends on the pipe wouldn't look good. That's why I'm doing it this way. It's a very simple part. As always, I start the job with a centre drill, followed by a twist drill, which is tapping size in this case for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. Brass, by the way, machines nothing like stainless steel. It cuts like butter and is very easy to use, and it doesn't get too hot. Sometimes when you drill brass or thread it, it does squeak a little bit, but that's not really a problem. It's not often that I use any lubricant when I'm cutting brass. This is something I wouldn't do with a piece of stainless steel. I'm threading the piece of brass under power. I've engaged the back gear in the headstock, which makes the headstock spindle and the chuck attached to it revolve slowly. Look what happens to the tap in this clip. When the tap gets right to the end of its travel in the hole, it rotates in the manually operated tailstock chuck and I much prefer this arrangement to a standard chuck with a chuck key because if at the end of its travel the tap doesn't rotate in the tailstock chuck it's going to snap off. I originally drilled this piece of brass tapping size for 5 16 by 32. This is a 5 16 drill I'm just recessing the end so it fits snugly onto my existing adapter. Generally speaking, unless you relieve the area or reverse the die when you're doing the job where the thread meets the rest of the body of the adapter, there will be no thread, and I've made this small recess to accommodate that fact. The piece of brass that I've used is too big, so I need to reduce its diameter. 
After checking the diameter of the original adapter that I made, I use a micrometer so I can make this one the same. First of all, I'm lightly facing the end to remove any burrs, and after doing this, I started to turn the diameter. This clip was filmed in real time, and I've set the position of the cutting tool entirely by eye to what I thought was approximately the size that I needed. And guess what? It was exactly the size that I needed. I'll put it down to beginner's look. Don't take my word for it. Once again, in real time, here's the micrometer, and it's a perfect size. I must stress, though, that it doesn't always work out this way. Before parting off the component, I'm going to bevel the edges with a file. Then I set the parting tool in a position to cut the part to the length that I need. As soon as I got part way through the work, I used the file to bevel the other end. Then I completed the parting off operation and the part fell into the chip tray, which was not a good idea, because left over from the stainless steel machining is quite a lot of very sharp stainless steel swarf. After this, I used my vacuum cleaner to clean up the chip tray and the surrounding areas. In this clip, I'm fitting the second check valve adapter to the first check valve adapter, and the thread isn't very tight. Note to self, adjust the die in the tailstock die holder. But in this case, it really doesn't matter. The gap will be useful for this stuff to fill. When using these what are called anaerobic adhesives, it's a good idea to leave a bit of clearance so that the Loctite can penetrate the joints easily. This is slightly too slack if I'm honest, but it's not a very high stress component. All I need to do now is screw adapter 2 into adapter 1. And once again in this episode, I was lucky it was in exactly the right position. Then I used my barco spanner to tighten the check valve into adapter number 2, and with a bit of adjustment, everything worked out well. As usual, I temporarily fitted a nut to protect the threads. The next job is piping, but piping the hand pump to this check valve turned out to be quite a problem. I will show it in detail, but it will be in my Comedy of Errors series. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.